Okay, so in class we are looking at how light uh, is behaving and how if we have multiple light sources would be a shadow be generated and so we're thinking about the different properties of light behavior to help formulate our ideas of shadow generation and so we want to remember two things about how light behaves so if we remind ourselves of those light behaviors that we're going to model light with the first was that light goes out in all directions from its source. So it's going to go out in an infinite number of rays from the source itself. And we're going to talk about point sources in this little mini uh, demonstration. So light goes out in all directions from the source. And the second thing is that light travels in a straight line. We're going to use both these ideas to help us think about how shadows are formed. And we did this example in class, but let's just review it so you have something to study. So here we have two lights orientated vertically from one another. They're point sources of light. I'm going to use different colors just to help us organize a little bit. We have a blocker and we're going to have a screen. So I'll just label these. This is our screen. This is our blocker. And then, of course, these are our light sources. So let's take each one individually. We're going to look at what does the shadow look like on the screen. We'll start with this light that's represented by a green. Now we know based on that information that light goes out in all directions. And there's going to be a ray of light that goes out and oops, let's make it a little longer. It goes out and hits the screen. And the very next ray of light, that's going to be blocked by the blocker. So this is the very last ray of light, drawing our arrows to represent the direction of that light ray, that hits the screen. We have light going out in all directions. Now all of these rays of light are going to hit the screen, but this one is the very last one with the next light being blocked by the blocker. So everything above this point will be illuminated by this top light that I'm representing in green. All of these light rays blocked, 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 blocked. And then we get to a point where one more ray of light sneaks by. Right here. I'll just take out that little part of the blocker. And then every ray of light below that makes it to the screen. So everything below this point is illuminated by the screen and everything in between here remains black. So this top light illuminates this area, illuminates this area, but the blocker prevents it from illuminating this area. Okay. So that's the shadow generated by the top light. What about by the bottom light? Well, same property. Light goes out in all directions. I'm going to use blue to represent that. And light rays travel and they hit the screen, they hit the screen, they hit the screen until this point where they're blocked. So there's one light ray that just makes it past and the very next light ray is blocked. So everything below this point is illuminated by this bottom light. Blocked, 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 blocked until just this one and my ruler is just long enough. Just that one makes it past and now everything above will make it past. So for the bottom light, this ray of light makes it to the screen. It's everything else is blocked until we are just past the blocker. This ray of light makes it to the screen and everything above that is illuminated. So what do we find? Well, in this area, two lights are hitting the screen. Two lights are going to be bright. In this area, only a single light hits the screen. So that is going to be dimmer. We have less light, so it will be dimmer. And I'm going to go ahead and erase these two light properties. Give myself a little more working space. All right, in this part of the screen, no light 
hits the screen. And so that, of course, is black. If we don't have light, we don't have anything we can see. As we progress further up, here we have one light. And again, it's dim. And at the very top, two lights. And we interpret that as bright. And so our shadow that we produce has an area of brightness, our standard, what the screen is illuminated. We get a band that is going to be dim. Well, we, if these two lights are just white light, that will be interpreted as gray. Then we have no light, that's black. A single light again, gray. And then we have the two lights that are bright. So we talked about in class, what happens if I change the brightness of these two lights? What if my bottom light was dim and my top light was bright? Well, where the two lights are together, that's still our standard. That's the full brightness when I have two lights that are going to work together and give us that full brightness. Where I have a single light, that's going to depend on whether or not I have the bright light present or the dim light present. In the bottom, so remember this one now was bright and this one was dim. Where the bottom light is present only, the bright light is blocked off, this is going to be extra dim. Where the bright light is only present, that's going to be a little bit brighter. Where both lights are present, we're going to have the most brightness. So depending on the strength of these two lights, we'll modify the shadow when those lights are present on the screen. All right, we can add a light, we're going to add a band. We can have multiple lights, we're going to have multiple bands. We can color the lights, and we're going to get color mixing on the screen, which we'll get to at the end of the semester. But this is your basic model, the ray model, for how we generate shadows. Good job.